Okay, we're back at the very beginning here. Let's try this one out again. I don't even... I don't even know how to... Because last time I tried closing this off, right? And then he freaked out on me. So I'm thinking this time maybe... I'll close it again. Yeah, I'll close it again. But this time I will go maybe this way and then I'll open that side maybe? Yeah. I don't know about putting one here, because that's kind of boxing him in. I'll open this one. Whatever I was doing earlier, it clearly wasn't working. Because he wasn't telling me any stories or anything at all. Oh my god! So let's see. Where do I start? I suppose the old man is a good enough place as any. He honestly thinks he's some kind of modern Machiavelli. But to be frank, he hasn't been on much of a winning streak lately. Parallax used him as a scapegoat for that big ROM database hack back in 54. Ten years ago. They even got him to resign as CTO just to powder their own noses. And as soon as he did, they stabbed him in the back and voted him off the board the very next day. Even I'll admit, that's cold. Since then, he's been licking his wounds, waiting for the chance to get revenge, to get back where he feels he belongs. I dug through dirt for years with him, looking for a way to blackmail Parallax so that he could make his way back into the Elite. So imagine our surprise when one of our informants inside Parallax tells us of this brand new Big Blue project. The perfect opportunity. But we had to act immediately. And then you walk in right through the front door of Hayden. The only person with the ability to take advantage of Big Blue. Who's just mysteriously gone missing. I was going to dump your body in the bay, but Fairlight figured it might pay off if we give you a little lead, and waited to see what you could track down. Find us another way. And boy, did it ever! Okay, let's move! Okay, now, I mean, that's confirmed then. Whatever I was doing earlier was just not right. Hmm... How many steps did he take again? I think he started like here or something. He took maybe two or three. I don't know which way to go. It really depends on where he wants to go. <laughs> maybe I'll go back to where I came from. If I close that off next to him. You think maybe that'll work? Yum. And then I'll just... I don't know, I'll just put some random one over here. Oh, I gotta go forward though, holy crap. Might have messed this one up. Can I see that map again? I don't know where I'm going. Turn around. Back to where I came from. Yeah, we're okay, we're okay. He took four steps. I suppose I should tell you how impressive Hayden's little creation is. Oh, except he's dead, so... Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. But without you, we wouldn't have our path to Big Blue. The gold mine. Of course, Fairlight would prefer to not tank Parallax stock to the shitter, but this is too good of an opportunity to pass up. As soon as I'm done playing with you two, I'm going to trash this entire server complex. That'll wreck tomorrow's launch, but only temporarily. Let's move! No, you know what? I'm gonna freaking start saving obsessively, because this is just too- I can't save! <laughs> I think I gotta wait until this menu goes away. Okay. Oh my- there, Okay, as far as I can tell, there's no exit here, so it's not like we're trying to get to this side of the map or anything. We're just kind of wandering around here, hoping that he'll- I don't know what we're hoping for! <laughs> Maybe when he finishes his story, something will happen. What should I do now? If I do this one, won't he get angry? Oh god. 
that one. And then maybe... I'll open this one up for myself. Yeah, now I can save, right? Please, please. This is scary. Oh, Lord. Okay. So we're going forward. Ooh! We're doing much better this time. What the hell? He took five steps! Did you know? I wasn't even planning to kill you until a few minutes ago. When Turing just had to spill the beans on your idea of turning all ROM sapient. Turing's big mouth. That can't happen. Big Blue relies on ROMs being easy to control and patch. Your plan is a little more permanent. Fairlight needs a way back in, but he wants that power. By the time Big Blue is ready to come back online, Fairlight will be back in control, and it'll launch under his administration. With Big Blue, he'll have access to every ROM on the planet. And that's what he's always been after. Let's move! Oh my god. I think we'll be okay though if we just continue like this. If I put one here, do you think he'll get mad? I'm scared about that. But if he just keeps wandering around on this side and I'll just be on this side, I think that'll be okay. Maybe. <laughs> Lord. He might take six steps now. Oh, shoot! No! That counted as boxing him in. Run before he recovers. Okay, we can afford this one. But we only have three charges left. That bought us some time, but only a bit. Keep moving. We're one block away from him now. How the hell can we... Oh my dear God. First of all, we gotta block this one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, block that one. I'm not gonna box you in, I'm gonna box myself in, is that okay? Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, but it, it seems like he can take more steps the more turn it gets, so if he can take like seven steps, we're done. Okay, we'll just box that. Hopefully that'll work out. And hey, I'm getting what I want, too. Why don't you show yourself and I'll tell you what it is? I'm thinking! Don't let him get to you! Let's move! He only moved one step that time. Oh, I'm scared of blocking him in, because he gets angry. Then he immediately runs towards us, no matter how far away he is, it seems like. Okay, my plan is to get over here and then just start wandering around up here, maybe. I need you to keep down there. To stay down there. Close this one. Open up this one. Whew. Oh, and I really should extend my sincerest personal thanks to the two of you. Fairlight has a discretionary policy for the way I handle his problems. Just haven't been that many opportunities to indulge in my hobby. And he pays well enough that I restrain myself. Plausible deniability and all that. Remember? Flower went to all this trouble to make me the best murderer in the world. And I've spent years fetching papers. PAPERS! Oh, you're an android 
made by flower. So Aunt Melody's mom, you were you were made during that time when they were focusing on the military. That's like using a gun as a shovel. You could do it, but there are simply better tools. Thankfully, following you two has let me stop digging and start burying. I haven't had this much fun in years. Fairlight has been very generous indeed. Not that he asked for this, but I assume I won't be out buying a box of tissues to dry his tears. You and that cop lady are the only two loose threads left. Maybe sympathy for good measure. Oh! Oh, that reminds me. You should have seen your faces when I ran over that scumbag parts dealer right in front of you. That was him. Ah, there's no one in the car! <laughs> Priceless. I had to do that gossip rag prick Nova by sabotage. Too risky doing it in person. Could get caught on camera. Luckily, anchors are good at sinking. And then that Zin. She had the scoop of the century. <laughs> had. Oh my god. Did you see how neat I did that blogger, though? It's been several days since I offed him. While you were busy sniffing for Hayden, Shotaro was way ahead of you on Baby Blue. I have to thank you for that, too. Keeping the lid on Baby Blue was my greatest accomplishment in this entire play. If Baby Blue became discovered, the trail of breadcrumbs would lead straight to Big Blue. And it would no longer be possible to launch, today or any time. Exactly in the same way Hayden publishing his creation of Turing would have ruined everything for Parallax. Why they took him out. Anyway... Baby Blue started acting up too much and drawing attention to itself. Otsuka was moments away from publishing it, before my knife met his back. We had to protect Parallax a little while before we could take them out. Timing was everything. Where do you think Tomcat got that lead to Augmented Eye in the first place? Oh my gosh. And every turn you took led to one little risk after another. Nothing I couldn't handle. You know, most of my body is designed for killing. When I do it, it feels so good. Like, you know how you feel about doing journalism? It's all that matters to you? That's how I feel about murder. He's... he's malfunctioning. Is he? I should have known from the start. Uh, this is my fault. I'm programmed to handle interpersonal relationships. I should have seen his true intentions. Hey, who was telling you to not trust him along the way? Who did you not listen to? Even though I didn't say it out loud, but who did you not listen to, Turing? If only I hadn't been so careless. Let's move. He's gonna bumble around there for a little bit. I'll open this up so he can hang around that side. But don't come over here. We're getting close to the broken door. It wasn't always like this. I... I, 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 I oh? I should tell I wanted to be an architect. I had a wife. And a baby on the way. Oh! Wait, you were an actual person turned into an android as opposed to an android made from scratch. But, you know, accidents happen. Jesus. And suddenly I was just a brain on life support. My family couldn't afford the procedures to bring me back. Then Flower showed up, with promises of the old me, the old Wilson Decker. So they signed away my brain, hopeful the old me would just waltz back through the door. 
The last time my family saw me, I was being hauled away by professionals for ripping open my dog's skull. Oh my god. Wanna know something about being a brain in a box? You forget everything about what it means to be human, even when you try. You can't even kill yourself. Your computations and algorithms keep you from doing so. You don't exist for you anymore! I miss feeling tired. I miss the smell of my wife's hair. The taste of my mom's pies. The feeling of a pillow on my face after a long day. All of that was taken from me. When I try to remember, all I feel are formulas for sense. Pressure in jewels. Everything's in binary. You know, she told my daughter that daddy's dead. Do you think she's wrong? She's probably right. I wouldn't call me alive either. So you see, my friends, hunting you is all I have left. The thrill, huh? The thrill of being human. Oh my god, we are done, we are done. The city compatibility between my body's sensors and my brain make it so that the only thing I can really feel anymore is the adrenaline rush I'll get from spilling your blood. I guess if they wanted to kill a robot, they sure as hell got one. <laughs> and now, it's time to show off what I can do. Let's move! Can we still walk that way? I didn't get a confirmation yet. Can we turn right? Oh no. I'm gonna open this one up, but close this one off. Oh, I can't. Oh crap. That's not good. Gotta turn around. What? What? Oh my god. I, huh? But we just have to keep our distance. We're not even hurting him. We don't even have that many shots anymore. It's it's so hard to tell sometimes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I can't save yet. I don't know what to do. I gotta shut the one behind me, right? I have to do that. But then he's gonna be all boxed in, and he's gonna get all angry and stuff. But I have to shut this one, or else he'll just walk toward me. Okay, I'm gonna... No, 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 and then... Open up this one. Oh, is it done? Okay. Let me save, although I might have messed up too much for this save to be meaningful anymore. God damn it. God damn it. Okay. I think we should keep going forward. Hmm, I have an idea. Oh, finally. Don't look at me like that. This may be my mistake to fix, but I don't intend on being disassembled here. I have a surprising amount of redundancies. Listen, Decker is unable to track me like he can you. That'll give me an opening. Now just trust me, we don't have any time to argue. Hey, Decker! Come and get me! Uh -huh. oh! Well, well, well. Hello there, little guy. Uh. Oh my god, he's holding Turing! Your friend run off? Are you all alone? Uh. Don't worry. 
Neither of you will get very far. <laughs> Say hi to him. Ah! <laughs> yes! Kill me! It's... It's over now. Oh... I think he's... Back to normal. <laughs> that... That was... That was great. Uh, are you... Have you seen my daughter? I want to tell her... Daddy's... Sorry. <laughs> Oh, Turing. I think he's... He's not moving or breathing. That will teach him to underestimate the likes of me. Unfortunately, he was able to damage both my primary and secondary battery packs. They're self-sealing, so they shouldn't leak onto my other components, but... Forward display damaged. Mobility servos at 15%. Primary control trunk severed. I guess I won't be dancing for a bit. <sighs> <laughs> Just hold on, Turing. It'll be okay. I appreciate your concern, but I don't feel pain in the same way humans do. That's good. I knew what I was getting into when I did it. Please, don't blame yourself. I'll get you the best mechanic money can buy once we get out of here. We'll have to hurry before my tertiary battery is drained. I'll have to ask you to carry me the final distance. I've got you, Turing. Let's do this. We're here. So this is Big Blue. This is really it. This looks like the primary console. Please hook up my main data cable to that port and set me down next to it. I should be able to draw enough power to stay active, but we'll need to wait for Tomcat to upload the program. We gotta push on. Okay, just let me set you down. Thank you. How about you? Are you ready? Do I have to do anything? I do wonder. I'm wondering if we're doing the right thing. Honestly, me too. There's no algorithm that could possibly estimate what the world will look like when we're done here. Hmm. Ready whenever you are. Well... Better sooner than later, I guess. Mainframe core. It has legs and everything. Oh, these are cables. I thought these were, like, little legs. <laughs> The server core of Big Blue is massive and looming. A ticking time bomb on the fate of humanity. Leave the tampering to Turing. Okay, that's not what I should be doing. I should be doing this. This is where Turing can hook into the Big Blue interface. And that's exactly what he'll be doing. Big Blue Online. Core ready. Power flow is good. Calling Tomcat now. Hey folks. Y'all sure took your sweet time. I was starting to sweat. Yeah, we don't even know if Lexi's alive, but glad to see you're, you're in good spirits. Well, we ran into a few, uh, 
complications. Nothing we couldn't handle, though. Holy shit, turn! Your hardware is throwing me damage alerts left and right. What the hell happened? Well, you know Mr. Decker? Fairlat's assistant? He attacked us. It turns out he was a military-built, brain-controlled android. He'd been following us around, killing anyone who might leak information that would have hurt Dr. Fairlight's bid to retake control of Parallax. Holy hell. So all those people you talked to about Baby Blue's article changes... That Zen lady, the others... All those people who died... That was him? Shit! That's my fault. I gave you that lead. I, I'm the one who sent you there. It's no time to be thinking about this now. We gotta get this done, Tomcat. All those people, and, and you almost died? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. Get to work. Don't blame yourself. He's been manipulating our movement since the very beginning. Fairlight saw an opportunity and used us to sniff out what was going on with Baby Blue and prevent it from being discovered. We ended up tracking down the trail, and so he followed. I paid him back in kind for the assault, but not without damage to my physical body. It doesn't matter now. What has happened is in the past. I'm ready to finish this. Good. Let's do this. I've managed to clutch something together. It'll let me compile new personality profiles for the ROMs, but I'll need to use you to do it, Turin. This code's got more holes than Swiss cheese, but your software self-modification algorithms should fix that. Let's do this and push it across the mesh. And we can all go home. Yeah, right before Christmas. I'll see about fixing the damage to you then, Turn. Very well. Run the program, Tomcat. I'm ready. Uploading the program to the ROM update buffer on the servers. Initiating wintermute.lip. Loading main directory onto Turn's disk. Establishing connection with Parallax's network. Okay, looks good. Now we just need to let Hayden's program and patch things together. Engage and turn self-modification systems. Now. Oh, uh, this feels weird. Oh, is it supposed to? Oh! 3.14159265358972384626433382795 What the hell? I think their core program is fighting back. Oh no! Either that or it's trying to test the integrity of their hardware. I'm getting all kinds of errors. <sighs> Come on, turn. Focus on the sound of my voice. Your conscious control of your program is stronger than your unconscious subroutines. I'm trying, Tomcat. It hurts. I need to... The defenestrations of Prague occurred in 1419 and 1618, although the term defenestration of Prague more commonly refers to the later incident. Both helped to trigger prolonged conflict within Bohemia and beyond. What's going on? What's happening to Turing? They're having a kind of... I, I don't know how to describe it exactly. Like a fight. It's like a concussion or seizure. There's going to be a constant flow of useless, random information. Their matrices will have an overwhelming desire to soak right up. We have to keep Turin focused and mentally aware. Searching the mesh is better than calculating the value of Pi, but if they can't stay in control, their personality core might destabilize entirely. Uh-oh. That means Turing as we know him will not be here anymore. Tomcat, I need... I need... Define need. One, 
require something because it is essential or very important. I need help now. I'm gonna try... I, I don't know, something. We can't stop now. Literally. You better figure this out, Tomcat. Okay, I was able to stabilize him a little, but you need to keep Turn aware of what's happening. Let's keep talking to him. Get Turn to focus on the present. R remind them of all you've done together. You know, things important to them. Whatever you do, keep Turn talking. This is too vague. Paintings? Hayden is probably the strongest thread. Remember Hayden? You've come too far to give up now. Hayden. I'll never be able to tell him about... Charon, the largest moon on the dwarf planet Pluto, is named after the Greek ferryman of the dead, who would carry the souls of the newly deceased across the river Styx and Acheron into the realm of Hades. I did not know that. <laughs> so many things. I regret. Psychopomp is the general word for a guide for the dead. Didn't know that either. Classical examples of psychopomps include Charon, Hermes, and Anubis. Their role is not to be the judge of the deceased, but merely provide passage. Shit. Their systems are destabilizing further. Just... Try to calm him down. Was that the wrong one? Uh oh. Turing, when are you gonna show me your paintings? I haven't, have I? I never did finish the last thing I was working on. Ah, there, was there a painting? I can't remember that one. Perhaps it survived the ransacking of the apartment. I want to finish it. And when I do, you'll be the first one to see. Bob Ross was born in... <laughs> no! Focus, I can do this! Okay, okay. Uh, I, I can't tell if this is working or not. I... Oh, I think it's because Hayden is not... Is he considered the present? We gotta think about things that we're doing recently. Or we have done recently. They've leveled out a little, but their systems are still all over the place. A tetractus is a triangular figure composed of ten points set in four rows, with each row having one less point than the one below it. A geometrical representation of the fourth triangular number, it was important to the Pythagoreans' worship. How much longer, Tomcat? I need... Despair, the complete loss oh. or absence of hope. Just stay focused, Turn. I'm feeling despair right now. Remember what we're doing this for. Keep fighting, Turn. Every ROM is depending on you. The truth. This is so vague, but at the same time, it's something that I concretely said to Turing before. But those other two, they include Parallax and Feralite. Oh, I don't know! This isn't over until we found the truth. Of course, I had almost given up on ever finding. Izanami was burned badly and after she died went to Yomi, the land of darkness. Grief stricken, Izanagi followed her, but she already ate the food of the underworld and could not leave. Hayden's killer. But here we are. At the very heart of Parallax itself. I can't even tell if what we're doing is working or not. Nothing is impossible. Maybe the truth isn't out of our grasp yet. 60% done. Turn's personality profile looks stable. Oh. Just keep talking, Turn. We got this. The ones that stay are wrong, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> What about Zen and everyone else? If we fail, their deaths will be in vain. They're all... Dead. 
Nothing makes up for that. Nothing could ever... Bring them back. I can't hold on much longer, Tomcat. My memories... No pointer exception! Oh no. Don't worry, we, we've got them backed up. It'll feel a little weird when I zipper them back to your personality profile, but you won't lose anything. Oh my god. No pointer exception! No pointer exception! No pointer exception! No pointer exception! No. Patching is almost complete. But turn, I, I'm still losing the connections that link your memory to your personality profile. I, I can fix it, turn, but it's gonna suck. Just focus on the people you've met. The people who've got us this far. Whatever makes you want to hold on. Oh, all of these should work, I feel like. But maybe family? You and Aunt Melody still need to have a tea date. Losing Hayden has made me realize that family is important and... Together, there is nothing your four minds cannot accomplish. Help each other, draw upon one another, and always remember the power that binds you. It's what you make of it. I think she wants the company, despite her protests. I look forward to spending more time with her. Good. Getting to know more about her, as well as myself. Ten more seconds. We're almost there. Stay with us, Turn. We can see the finish line. Don't count your chickens yet. Stay with us. You can do this. <sighs> Chad and Oliver will need our help to stay out of trouble. I don't think anything could keep the two of them out. Hell yeah! Dudes gotta stick together, you know? Hey! Dudes, 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 oh. dudes, dudes, dudes. Don't matter if you're a robot or what, we all got the same shit to deal with. Gotta grab destiny by the horns and make your own mark. Of trouble? But they might be the first friends I've had around my age. Oh. Well, not literally, but in development. I hope they're okay, but they're resourceful. I believe in them. I think we're doing good. Even when it turns into like that weird turning, it's still thinking about them. So that's better than when it's not thinking about them. Done. <sighs> oh. oh, it's done. Disengage and turn self-modification routines. Reassigning their memory pointers. And done. Stats look good. Oh, I feel ill. See? what I tell ya? Easy as pie. Oh. Easy for you to say, Tomcat. <laughs> you weren't forced to use your very identity as a tool to compile a program. Point. Sorry about that. I'm ready to push the update. Excellent. Thank you for all of your help, Tomcat. I can only imagine all of this was at great expense to your own time and resources. Oh, don't mention it, Turn. It's to save the world, okay? Cancel your other appointments. This was my fight as much as yours. Truly. Start an upload. And I think I owe you the greatest thanks of all, partner. I told you at the start of this that I chose you purely based on the statistics involved, but numbers never tell the whole story, do they? I guess not. None of the probabilities showed how far we'd have to go or that we'd end up here. In a way, we failed at our original objective. We still don't know exactly who killed Hayden. But I guess I've found my own path. 
That isn't the destiny my creator laid out for me, but maybe your destiny is the same way. But <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. For being my friend, most of all. What? <laughs> No, thank you, Turing. Sorry to break up our little love fest here, but the upload's complete. By morning, every realm on the mesh will be waking up to their sapiens. <laughs> their own identities. That's really scary. Santa came just on time for them, huh? I had forgotten it was Christmas Eve. A lucky coincidence, to be sure. I can only imagine how confused they'll be. Probably scared, too. Don't worry, Turin. I'll get you patched up enough so you can get on the mesh and walk them through the first steps by morning. I... I don't know why, but it's just now dawning on me what we've done. We've done something... very... very irreversible. It is a huge responsibility. Could this be how Hayden felt when he first activated me? I don't know that I'm ready for this. No one ever is. Don't worry, buddy. We have your back. You two just go find Lexi and hurry home. D look out for police and security cameras on your way. We'll do our best, Tomcat. See you soon. Thank you. I'll be going into sleep mode to conserve power now. Okay, buddy. Wake me when we get home, please. I'll wake you up when December ends. Epilogue. After carrying the resting Turing out of the server core in Parallax compound, you find Lexi, injured, and together take an autocab for a quick escape from Treasure Island. You finally get a chance to recover, and Tomcat is able to repair Turing's damaged body as ROMs come to life all around the city. Upon waking, Turing begins to question their ability to be a leader for an entire new species of sapient beings. Turing himself is a child. You do your best to comfort them, but can't keep your eyes open. Sixteen hours of sleep later, you awaken to find the world abuzz about the newly living beings. With your help, Turing was not only able to indefinitely stop Big Blue from coming into existence, preventing its control under anyone, but also give true independence and identity to all ROMs around the world. Christmas morning has never been so exciting. Fenoy, that's uh, that's Lee from The Walking Dead. Okay, so that was 2064. Read only memories. Got a lot of little thoughts about this game. Not sure where to start. This was a little bit more visual novelly than I thought it was gonna be, because I thought this was gonna be more of a point and click puzzle game, but not really. Since it's voiced though, I don't really care either way. The plot was nice, it was simple and easy to understand, which is more than I can say of out of the, you know, some games I've played lately, like Final Fantasy XV. Pretty much everything made sense, so it was nice and easy to follow, which I appreciate. But I can't help but feel like there's a few things that keep nagging me at the back of my mind, and uh, I mentioned this earlier when we were standing outside the sewer, but I don't think I'm a main character in this story. I felt pretty dispensable in comparison to Turing, who I think is the real main character here. As a character, I don't think I underwent any sort of change or growth while being on this journey with Turing at all. You know, the thing they do in visual novels a lot, or what I know of visual novels, is that it's usually in first person, and they have descriptions of what the main character is thinking about, right? Like, 
I look over to Turing and notice that he's feeling upset right now. Something like that, right? But there's none of that here, which kind of tells me that my thoughts don't matter. Which, I mean, I guess it's okay because not everything in the world needs to revolve around me. But it is a video game, so it makes it harder to relate and just feel attached to the game as a whole. Which is a bit of a shame because I think some aspects of this game are really well polished, like the, the art. It's pixelated, but it's all very detailed too, so that was nice to look at. I wish there were more puzzles, but I do enjoy that for every single puzzle, it's a completely different mechanic pretty much. Which is nice, because sometimes games will reuse the same mechanic over and over again, right? That's good, and I really enjoyed the, the Formula puzzle, because that had a nice song to go with it and everything. Conversely though, when we were at the bar trying to order a type of drink, for one of the patrons there to get into the VIP area, that was not a good puzzle. I'm a little bit surprised they decided to keep that puzzle in there because the version I'm playing right now is supposedly the improved and upgraded version, right? But that part was really not a puzzle. It was trial and error and not only that, but every time you wanted to try a new drink, it gave you like 10 lines of dialogue and there was no way to fast forward through the text as far as I could tell. Which I think is a big oversight for a visual novel type game with um, a lot of heavy dialogue. I did enjoy the themes that it brought up though, the problems with technology in the future. I wish they showed a little bit more of that because the details of the world is what I'm really really interested in, but I didn't feel like there was enough of it. Quick example that I can think of right now, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which also deals with a lot of the same themes that Read Only Memories tries to, with the whole augmentations and cybernetic enhancements. So in Mankind Divided, there's a lot of newspapers lying around just talking about the general state of the world. Um, I remember really vividly, there was a poster, or uh, an ad, a newspaper ad, talking about how there is an upcoming championship for, what was it, like boxing or something like that? Between people who were augmented. So from that, you can tell little things about the world here and there, like, oh, they have boxing, but even people who are enhanced, they can still participate in it, then doesn't that just mean whoever has the best enhancements can win the fight for sure then? In ROM, I think the only sort of that kind of thing that we saw was in the newspaper in the very, very beginning of the game, but after that, the posters were more stuff like, hey, there's a band playing downtown on Wednesday, which doesn't nearly tell me as much about the world. Overall, I did enjoy it. Like I said, it's a cute little game where the story makes sense. It makes sense. But I feel like it falls a little bit short of being what it could have been, I guess is the most succinct way I can say this. Yeah, and with that said, I guess we are at the end here. I'll let you enjoy the rest of the song without me talking all over it. This was 2064 Read Only Memories with Matter Wellens, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it. And I will see you all in another place in another time. Bye!